the hexagram, more commonly known as the Devil's Trap. We've all seen it on Supernatural with Bobby, Sam, Dean, using it to great effect. But what is it, and could it actually hold any power? And what if I was to tell you that I've used it twice in all these years, and it worked? Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Supernatural Files. A dodgy episode tonight. I have a broken door, we have gale force winds, there's bumps, there's bangs and all sorts of things going on and not one of them of a ghostly nature. Otherwise we actually, we wouldn't mind that would we? Okay, so, The Devil Trap. Like I said, we've all seen it on Supernatural, fantastic show. In fact, absolutely best Supernatural show in the world ever. Couldn't have, there's nothing to top that. Never will be. Absolutely amazing. A lot of it was actually based in history and fact when it comes to some of the symbolism and some of the rituals. Not all. It is Hollywood. It is TV. It did go a little bit sometimes, but it's TV. Like I said, in all the years, I've actually used it twice and it worked. Now I can see one or two people going, Don, I thought you was kind of grounded and it was all about the truth. You know, on the Supernatural Files, I am grounded and it is about the truth. Maybe I need to elaborate just a little bit more. So, quite a few, quite a few years ago now, I had a case in Northamptonshire. Young mother, lovely woman, Andrea, her daughter, woke up screaming in the night because she saw a figure at the end of the bed. Andre, being very grounded and good mother, nah, you're dreaming, you go back to sleep. This continued for a few nights until one particular night, Andrea saw the same figure. I was called by Nick um, to come out and uh, investigate exactly what was going on. As with all cases, I'm skeptically open-minded because you know what we know how people's minds can play tricks on them and we know how some people can be no disrespect to this woman at all but every case i approach has got to be with an open mind i take in everything i'm being told their experiences their feelings but at the end of the day that is their perception this particular case was one of them that was uh, yeah to the point it was winter it was cold. She fled the house with the children into a neighbour's yard, living in a tent because she feared to go back to her own home. I was called out by Nick. Um, Nick's friends, Dean and Damo, they, um, they they had a production company, so uh, they came out as well to film just in case anything happened, which I was very grateful for. Um, absolutely fantastic people. So. Like I said, we're winging it, so bear with me. Because there's nothing staged and nothing rehearsed, you know that, okay. So we got there. Walked in. It felt pretty busy. I wasn't going to say anything at this time because, again, I don't want to have any influence on the, the householder or the children. So I always do poker face when I get in these places until I find out exactly what is going on and the best way to approach it. Um, well guys, it was one of them rare ones. In fact, it was a crazy day. This was daytime. It went crazy. I was walking down the stairs and a voice, everybody was hearing voices out of the air, not just me. And this voice came out and said, break his legs. That's nice. That's that window I was talking about. It's nothing spooky, don't worry. Break his legs. Okay. And uh, then I was talking to Damo, uh, Damo, one of the camera operators upstairs. We were standing side by side in the bedroom. And we were just talking quietly. This voice, louder than we were talking, right there between us, said, 
I will kill you. Um, my young daughter uh, was in bed and woke up um, saying there was a man in the bedroom um, and I woke up and said there wasn't anybody in the bedroom and to go back to sleep uh, but she persistently kept saying there's a man in the bedroom. She, she went down the bed to get away from him and was just crying and screaming that there was a man in the room um, and obviously I didn't see anybody in the room but she adamantly said there was somebody in there. Obviously after that had happened I just thought just forget about it you know she's only a little girl and everything but then I sort of started to notice little things happening myself with you know could hear footsteps on the, the landing um, and, and noises in the bedroom like somebody walking around the bed um, and a lot of noises in the bathroom as well. Um, I thought I was going a bit mad, I thought I was imagining things and you know it's all in my head but I think deep down I knew that something was happening in my house. Uh, on the shoe it was, uh, it was the first time I ever met Don, um, so I, I literally got told half hour before he turned up that uh, this gentleman called Don was turning up, didn't know what he did. Uh, what he does, um, how he was personally, um, but yeah, that was the first time I've, I met Don. Uh, what Don does is is completely different to what I've seen before. Um, I, I wouldn't say his his techniques are normal to what people do. And he goes, Don's definitely got some different than others. While I was on the shoot uh, with Don, um, let's say we're in this room. Um, we we done a couple of EVP sessions, but we got we come up short, so we decided to um, just stay quiet, see what we could hear, see if anything actually happened, and lo and behold, a voice between us said, "We will kill you," and that's it was it was a kind of weird experience because we were both silent and we both turned and looked at each other and was like, "What was that?" <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that was a really good experience because I've never heard a voice like that as clear as that before. Said, yep, I told you Damo this shit can happen. Now, hats off to Damo because you know he stood his ground. I don't know if it's because he was next to me or because he didn't run anywhere, but uh, it was it was absolutely fascinating. So right then when we was packing up, I raced and turned packing the gear away, this voice came out of the air that they heard as well. Get out At the end of the shoot, um, me and uh, a team member, Rachel, uh, we our job was to unplug all the equipment and bring it all back down uh, to pack away and uh, we were upstairs we we're unplugging our equipment and um, as clear as day word for word all windows were shut up here uh, we heard get out um, we both looked at each other like kind of like did you hear that and it was like well yeah it was pretty clear what it said and what it did um, what it wanted us to do um, but as we are we just carried on and I'm sure she'll collaborate on that have you any idea how strong the energy needs to be to enable that to happen? I have spent many, many years, me and Becky together. I wouldn't say that Becky talking out of the air is a commonality. I wouldn't say it was a common thing. In fact, the last time I heard her clearly was when I was at my mother's. And it was the night before I was due to come out to the station. I've been here for nearly a year now. So, well, Becky, off to America tomorrow. New beginnings. The other side of the room, straight out of the air, straight, I can't wait. As loud and clear as that. Now, this begs a question. There is something that enables these guys to speak loud and clear at certain given opportunities, certain windows. I'm still digging around trying to find out what that window is, but I don't even know if they know what that window is. We presume these guys know everything. Do you know what? They don't know everything. And don't worry, I'm coming back to the devil truck thing in a minute.
and the fact that I used it and it worked. It's, you know what? If we could just find out what enables them to speak, or at least Becky, to me, to speak out of the air with such vocal ability and clarity, well, Steve said Becky, yeah, those that follow us will already know that he was coming over on the plane um, to Keith, but uh, Keith Linder, the, you know, the bottle case we did. And I told Steve, I said, I want to do an experiment. He says, what? I said, I want to go into the bathroom on the plane. Typically, Becky, see if it makes any difference at 30, 40,000 feet. He goes, oh, okay. So I went in. I tried it. Waste of time. Although it was, I thought it was quiet. Obviously, of course, boom, boom, waste of time. So I come back and sat down. I was here, Steve was this side of me. He said, any good? I said, waste of time, Steve. Becky knew I was trying this experiment. It was literally 15 seconds later. We're sitting there, forgot about the experiment. It's Becky. As loud and as clear with that clarity, just like that. It's Becky. Steve went, and I just grinned. I went, you, he went, oh my God, it's Becky. It was blown away. <laughs> it was absolutely blown away. I remember mean, at Keith Linders we were talking. I've spoken about this before. We were talking about the case, and Becky just joined in in not a whispy voice, a beautiful harmonic female voice. You never heard a, a sweet voice like it. Steve got emotional. But then again, why, why, why wouldn't you? You know that that is a privilege to be part of something like that. So that goes back to my original question: What is it that enables these guys? It seems to have a little window sometimes when all the variables are in the right place to allow them to speak straight out of the air, or at least to me. It's one of those questions. But you know what? There's <laughs> a question I, uh, I will try to find the answer to over the next coming weeks, months, or even years, because there's always an answer to every question. And I used to just saying, hey, Becky, so what do you need to just talk out of the air? She might not even know. Or they may know is sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. As far as we know, they may just be doing the same thing all the goddamn time, talking out of the air, and we cannot hear them because the variables are affecting the because the environmentals and all the different variables are actually affecting us being able to hear them. Their voices actually coming through. So that's one of them big mysteries that I, I I'm all over this shit. Because if, if we can achieve that, wow, that's not just a game changer, that is end game. Okay, so I was telling you about Damo, what he experienced. First time I met Damo, great guy, great guy. I think we should take a look at that clip. Take a look at this. If anyone came up to me and asked me about this case, um, Skeptics mainly. Um, she was she was right to be distressed. I mean, it's it's. I'm quite not a skeptic. I'm open-minded. But when you come into a house and then you hear a voice saying "We will kill you," um, it's not it's not something to be skeptical about. Um, I heard it with my own ears. Um, I was definitely sure it wasn't Don. I know what his voice sounds like. Um, and yeah, any, anyone try and challenge that is. It's a bit silly. Um, there is some in this house. Can you imagine being in Damo's shoes at that time with a voice in front of, between both of you about there? I'm gonna kill you. That's how clear it was. Wow. I wasn't bothered. That's my backyard. Damo was an open-minded skeptic. Not for long. When he had that, obviously you can see it had a profound effect on him. And he probably still does to this day. Because you go from middle of the fence to the other side of the fence. Wow, this shit's real. That's a big eye opener. That's a big eye opener. People can't imagine how scary it is um, to not want to live in your own home and try and stay out of it as long as possible each day. Um, it's not very nice. It's very scary actually. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Um, Don and the team come out after a couple of days um, just to assess the situation and to see 
what was going on in my house. Absolutely nothing in the bathroom at all. Right, this bedroom's yeah, straight, straight, literally more or less in line with that lampshade, straight down. It, it's quite strong everywhere, but it's, that's the centre point. It's very, very strong. What I'm going to say is strong. Um, immediately to walk in the bedroom here, it feels quite strong there, but this is actually, as soon as the room next door, this is stronger just here than it is anywhere else in the room for some reason. Why, well, I don't know, but we'll start asking questions later. Okay, okay. Okay. The night Don was here sorting things out, um, a lot of people here that heard really bad threatening voices coming out of nowhere, um, it was very scary. All I wanted was my home back. I know what was going on in my house and I knew that it was real and I would say to anybody and I mean anybody who's going through the same as what I have been through for this last year, please tell somebody and get some help because you can't live like it because it takes over your life, it ruins your life and it affects every part of your life. So get help. I knew I'd got a lot to deal with because obviously the, the voices I'd heard previously out of the air. That's not average, that's a little above average, that's strong entities. Entities with capabilities and to all intents and purposes, whether they believe they can do it or not, breaking legs, killing you or whatever. Entities with intent. So I started off on the stairs. I did some Latin stuff, which is known to repeat now. And this lady said, Don't you, this female voice, let's not call her a lady, we don't know what she was, she said, Don't you fuck with me. Wow. Mainly in the bedroom. And that's where we got our focus point, where Andrew had seen this figure and that poor little daughter. Can you imagine being a little child and seeing that? And I guess the fact that your mother moves you out of the house into a tent for a little while reinforces actually the child. I seen something scary. So, you know, this was this was a very, very important case because children were involved. And no matter where I am or whatever I'm doing, if I ever get a call and something's affecting a child, I will drop everything. I'll be there within twenty four hours. I was doing my stuff and I went downstairs. Becky, there's a lot going on here. Can you and the guys help me sort it out? She said, we're doing it. Went upstairs, told her some, said, oh, Becky and the guys are sorting some shit out right now. A couple of hours later, or about an hour later, sorry, said, Becky, is, is it sorted yet? She said, we're still doing it. My God. What was going on? Can you imagine it was Becky and all the guys piled in there, was it fisticles or just, some kind of fight was going on and obviously it took an hour or two so there was something going on oh my god i, I sometimes wish i could visualize and see exactly what was going on can you imagine that my god that would be incredible anyway so i was doing my thing they were doing their thing everything gone quiet pretty much everything apart from upstairs in this main bedroom where this entity was seen at the end of the bed it was still there When we talk about the devil trap, this raises a very interesting question. How's this symbol? This symbol derived from the two keys of Solomon, which are derived by the two books of Solomon into one, which the first one was about incantations and trapping and controlling, not just demons, but also angels as well. This goes back to Italy, 15, 15, originally I think it was 15th century Italy in the manuscripts was the first time this devil trap was actually documented, although there was something similar to that in Greek 
Greek time, it was back a little bit, bit further than that. But the thing is, you know, this thing appeared. This is not like the. This is not like this. Been around for thousands of years. This appeared. So that's that's quite recent. So that's intriguing. The power of a devil trap. What is it? Has it got any power? What about a crucifix? Religious groups all around the world, Christian, Catholic, Church of England, everything, crucifix, particularly in exorcisms. And you know what? You've seen the footage online, anywhere. As soon as that crucifix comes nearby, it's, yes! Whether the people believe they're possessed or whether they actually are, but that's the effect of this crucifix. That's, that's the power of this crucifix. In real terms, you know what? The crucifix has as much power as his pair of glasses. That's the reality of it. That's how much power a crucifix has got. This symbolism of God, that's, that's the amount of power he's got. Pair glasses. Unless the person believes otherwise, then it can be the most powerful thing in the world. So this brings me to the point I'm trying to make. It's about belief. If you believe something has power, you're giving it power. Obviously, especially with people that are said to be possessed, they won't know the ins and outs and the history of everything and the crucifix and actually how Romans used to actually crucify. They also probably don't even understand that when people got crucified by the Romans, they were never made to carry a cross on their backs for half a mile. They only carry the top part, you know, the bit that goes across there. Yeah. This bit. Okay. And generally, the Romans then, what they would do is they would leave the actual stake in the ground for the next victim. So it was always just that part that was carried. So the power of the cross have got no power whatsoever. It's a piece of wood, it's a piece of metal. That's all it is, unless the person believes it has got power. This is where I'm coming to. We was at Andrews, like I said. We had this one, I had this one particular thing. Didn't go? Well, at least it didn't go with your others. Everything else had gone, the whole house was quite buffy in this one room. And you know, Alison and Nick were there, they, they witnessed this. I put a pentagon on the, uh, sorry, I did a devil trap on the floor. This thing was vocal. I said, okay, come on, let's go. Why don't you come to me now, show me what you've got. Do you know what he said? You're trying to trick me. You're trying to trick me. Interesting. Do you know what this is? It's a devil trap. Interesting. We believe spirits know everything about everything. Do we ever consider that they might actually have their own belief system because they don't know everything about everything? Did this devil trap actually hold any power or did it merely hold the power because the entity believed it did? Interesting question. Pretty much the same as the crucifix. Something to think about, isn't it? I've used it on two occasions, and the reason I said it worked is because this thing would not come near me why I got this on the floor. Nick and Alison clearly could see that. There is some Latin. I said to Nick, wow, that's weird. He said, what's up? Something's changed. He said, what do you mean something's changed? There was this energy I'd never felt before, and it was super strong, it was really strong. I said, I've never felt this before. Wow. Pulled the recorder out. I said, who's that? Said Michael. Very, very fine, profound voice. 
St. Michael. And you know one thing that really stood out? I've been taking recordings all night on this very recorder, it's all the X on the back which they put when we were testing it, yep. And this years and years and years. Every recording got a certain amount of static in. This recording, it was crystal clear. There was no static whatsoever. It was like it was in a goddamn recording studio. No, that was um, pretty, pretty freaky, that one, though. But what about this? And, uh, and, and if this is the man himself, then my goodness, what a privilege it must be for Don. Yeah. But for us t to be here, there's yeah. just myself, you, and Don. Yeah. Human <laughs> here in this house. Um, but the recording of St. Michael, mm -hmm. how did that make you feel when you heard that? Because I literally was tingling all over. Yeah, it was just In fact, amazing. Don, is that you? It is. Mate, we're just talking about St. Michael recording. Can you just play that back to us? I'm just going to listen to it again. I'm sorry. Have you? I always say there's nothing that can actually surprise me. But this. That is, without doubt, a human voice. Is it? Is it? The voice of St. Michael. That's a big one, isn't it? You're graced by the presence of St. Michael when you do the old Latin thing. Okay, let's, let's just do that. Formats. Okay, that's done there. Okay, Becky. I guess the first relevant question right now. The Devil Trap. In that case in Northampton. And you said, we saw it. And then you said, it was St. Michael. So... The question is, I said the devil trap works, not because he's trapped a devil or an entity, but because he wouldn't come near me because that was right in front. <coughs> You're trying to trick me. Do you know what this is? Devil trap. Fantastic. So, Becky, was that because the then said <coughs> demon thing? undesirable or indifferent did he believe that was going to cause him a problem thank you usual 10 seconds stop oh we have something but we don't have that sort of experience You guys may not, fingers crossed. It's not a good recording, but I've explained already why. So guys, it looks like it could be, it could have been a great night, but you know what, how it is? I don't want to waste your time, my time, or their time. I think... Let's get the text sorted. Do you know what, guys? I'm going to have one more cigarette. We're going to try a couple of recordings. If it's no good, we're going to go. We're going to call it tonight. Because in my experience, if it's like this, it's going to stay like this. Until about three, four o'clock in the morning when it will get significantly better. But it is now 12.25 and I don't want to be sitting out for another two and a half, three hours or something. Plus, <laughs> I can't be drinking this for the next two and a half, three hours. That might not end well. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be entertaining, but I'll probably get some more subscribers as well. Okay, so what I'm saying, right, so this is what I'm going to do. 
You know, I spoke earlier about having a special guest on the program, and I'm saying that would be you because you are special. You followed me, Becky. You supported me. Supported our work. Subscribed and sharing our work, or at least some of you are. You should all be sharing our work. It's important. Okay. So next weekend, if not before, let's do the YouTube live. Let's get a couple of you guys live on the show. Don't forget Tony Ruffman on probably too short on this one, but I'll try. But primarily, shoot your questions. Be good to talk to you guys. A lot of you are just names on a YouTube comment page. I know there's real people behind their names. Okay, so let's do this year, next weekend. YouTube Live, Supernatural Files, Don and a couple of the guys. And uh, you know, you can ask anything you want. I'll answer what I, what I actually can. If you want any advice, I can do that too. Sorry, I can't hear. I can hear something, but that was a that was a something aware of that. Oh my God, that is the best recording we've had all night. Let's, see, let's, try, this, let's just try this one. So, there we are from now, the next Supernatural Files will be a little bit more constructive. <laughs> Tonight I didn't say we were winging it. But, we still pulled out some interesting stuff tonight, and there's a couple of good clips there, I'm sure you've all enjoyed. Right, guys, you know what I'm going to say. I am trying to build this channel. I need more subscribers. This is important work, and any new viewers if you this is the first one you've seen do not judge my standards by tonight please this is real it's about truth and it just occasionally this time of year it's a bit of a whitewash sometimes this is one of the nights where it's not been fantastic don promised me my house back that night and i got my house back that night and i am so grateful to him and i've made some long life friends Stay well, keep safe, look after yourself guys, and I will see you on the next episode. Good night and bye for now.